Benjamin's bootable Electron Node.js application is a pre-configured system that bootstrap Electron so you can write an HTML page and basically use any Internet of Things related hardware. In this case I'm using Johnny5 and Raspbii.io to, to switch on or off this LID. But that's not it. So the, the, the way you work with Benja is actually pretty straightforward. You have your SD card that now I'm gonna put on a simple adapter and plug into my computer. Um, the SD card will mount in any hosting machine like uh, Mac OS, uh, Linux or Windows, it doesn't matter really. Um, you will see the folder, the Benja app is a folder that contains basically exactly what you're running. So to test, you just type on that folder npm start and you see what's going on. So this is what we were running before. And now I, I would like to try uh, a different software. Um, I will get rid of the index HTML and rename the papyrus, uh, which is uh, the, the, the software I wanna run. And I'm gonna show you what basically I, I'm doing. So here is, uh, is, is just the time. What time is it? Is, uh, uh, this is a simple canvas drawing with a pixel font, some some number on the canvas itself. And basically, this software is uh, uh, creating images out of a canvas. What can I do with these images? So this is the the papyrus. Uh, E ink display is a, a electronic paper display that you can you can use through your Raspberry Pi. So now I'm gonna use another Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi three, and I'm gonna plug the the papyrus display right here. So what I would like to show you is uh, uh, I've just changed. Uh, the, the, the index HTML, I used another index HTML and now I'm gonna unplug my SD card and I'm gonna put my SD card right on the Raspberry Pi and I will switch it on and hopefully what I'm expecting to see once it boots uh, the boot time might take a uh, few seconds, it depends on the how fast is your uh, SD card um, uh, and yeah and how long it takes to bootstrap the entire thing so there are a few different targeting target boards not just the Raspberry Pi uh, usually it takes just few seconds so let's while we're waiting for this to boot let's see what we're doing here basically this is um, a, a really a document with a canvas and this canvas, you see, you see, we already have the updated time. Uh, this canvas is uh, drawing fonts. The the font is a is an old project of mine. It's basically a pixel font. In this case, it's a three by five pixel font. Um, the draw pixel font is a function that is drawing on the canvas through rectangles. It's drawing all little rectangles, and you you can see these rectangles uh, directly as an image. Um, there are a few things that I'm doing just for uh, as a developer, just to make the development easier, um, like centering the entire thing on the screen, so I can test directly and see that it fits, uh, that is actually on the middle of the screen, like you have seen before. Um, and uh, uh, what this software is doing is basically with an inline uh, function invocation with a named uh, function expression is getting the current time um, split in hours and minutes and you as you can see now we just updated and every minute is going to update the time uh, it's not so uh, uh, cpu intensive task is it's actually pretty simple it just takes long time for the display to update so showing seconds wouldn't make sense because it takes three seconds more or less to update the entire screen. So this is just clearing the canvas, uh, uh, changing the fill style and you can see basically info about the canvas, the sides of the screen that I wanna uh, use and the background color and the color are uh, attributes. 
I'm using those attributes to, to, to draw everything I need. At the end, if it's an ARM, so if I'm actually running on the Raspberry Pi, ARM, uh, this is a constant that I create through require OS arc. And if it's uh, the architecture is an ARM, then I'm, I'm sure I'm running not on my laptop, but on the Raspberry Pi. And at this point, I'm gonna use sim simple Canvas API, like two data URL. Uh, I will remove the base64, the bit, so the data, uh, image, PNG, uh, colon, base64, comma. So I just get rid of the initial part of the information. And I'm gonna use actually exec asynchronous. Uh, uh, I'm gonna execute asynchronously on the on the backend on the Linux side. I'm gonna execute this string um, and uh, decode it as a clock PNG. And then I will use the official API from Papyrus, and I will use the uh, the, the Python script, the Python two script that is Papyrus draw clock PNG and dash t resides is just to be sure that. It doesn't really actually matter what kind of uh, what kind of screen I'm using. Any size will fit, um, and that's it. Once I've done all of these, I can just set them out again the same Benjo clock uh, function expression in a, in a minute, um, and it's gonna be updated. Thank you.